The world of Haven and Hearth is filled with danger. Not only can other players attack and kill you, they can also steal your items or destroy everything you've worked so hard to build. So today, I'm going to be walking new players through their first steps in protecting their belongings. Keep in mind that this video is not a complete strategy for protecting your stuff, it's just the beginning, so please check out my next video on base building after you finish this one. I'll put a link in the description once it's up. Your very first option for protecting your belongings as a new player is a lean-to, a small building made with tree boughs, blocks of wood, and string. If you're not sure how to get tree boughs or blocks of wood, I recommend you check out my new player walkthrough video, which covers that and a lot of other knowledge you'll need to succeed as a new player. I'll put a link in the description. To acquire string, open your character sheet to the lore and skills tab and make sure you've acquired the foraging skill. Then access the abilities tab and spend some learning points to increase your exploration ability to level 3. This will enable you to find both spindly taproot and stinging nettle, forageable items which count as string, on most forested biomes. Forageable items like taproot and nettle spawn randomly as you explore, and the easiest way to find them is to keep an eye on your map. If you're having a hard time finding them, or if it's winter, an alternative method to get string is to craft it from water and tough bark, a variety of bark harvested from certain trees. Once you have all the necessary items, go into your build menu, pick a location for the lean-to, and build. To explain what a lean-to does, first I have to explain criminal acts in Haven. Basically, there are certain things players can do in Haven which are considered criminal acts. In order to commit a crime, a player must have purchased certain skills first. Additionally, when committing a crime, an object called a scent is left behind, which can be traced back to the offender. When committing severe crimes, like theft or vandalism, the offender becomes temporarily unable to fast travel and won't disappear when logged out. All of these factors combined can sometimes act as a deterrent to thieves. In other words, some players who would eagerly take your items when they're left out in the open would leave them alone if their only option to take them was committing a criminal act. Lean-tos are special buildings, and any object placed inside yours, like a storage basket, can only be removed by another player by committing a criminal act. Please keep in mind, though, that this is only a deterrent to thieves. Other players can still steal from your lean-to, and many will. Plus, a lean-to can only hold two objects, and you can only have ownership of one lean-to, meaning they don't offer a lot of storage, so we're going to want to upgrade to a personal claim as soon as possible. A personal claim, or P claim, effectively allows you to claim ownership of a plot of land, upon which you can assign permissions to groups of players and anyone who wants to violate those permissions has to commit a criminal act to do so. Basically, it gives you limited protection like a lean-to, but in a larger area. Plus, you'll need a P-claim before you build a palisade, which is a sturdy wall that will give you a dramatically higher level of protection. To make a P-claim, first you're going to need to build a Dreamcatcher. To do so, you'll need to buy the Will to Power and Hearth Magic skills. Make sure you have some tree boughs and string, and you should be able to find the recipe in your build menu. Once you've built it, you'll need to wait around 20 minutes real-time before you can harvest a beautiful dream from it. You'll need a total of two dreams to follow along with this video. Keep in mind that there may still be a bug with dream catchers where dream production gets stuck for a while when the dream catcher is first built. So if you think you're experiencing that issue, just go exploring for a while and try to find an area you'd like to settle in. Make sure to catch any squirrels, rabbits, or chickens you see while you're exploring, since you'll need four bones to build your claim as well. Once you find an area, I recommend you do a little bit of terraforming to flatten the land where your claim pole will be built. You don't have to flatten the entire area of your future base just yet, and you could technically skip terraforming entirely, but whatever you build on uneven land now may be a pain to fix later, so let me show you the basics. First, ensure that you have the carpentry and landscaping skills, and craft and equip a shovel, which will speed up this process. Shovels take both of your hand equipment slots. Next, go into your adventure menu and check out the landscaping section. The most important action here is Survey Land, which allows you to designate a rectangular area to examine and flatten. For now, let's survey about a 15 by 15 area by selecting the Survey Land action and clicking and dragging. We'll be building our claim pole in the center once we flatten the area. When you interact with the survey flag, you'll see a grid of dots that shows you the ground's elevation. The green dots on the grid show ground that's already at your desired elevation. Blue dots show ground that's lower than your desired elevation, which you need to fill up with soil, and pink dots show ground that's higher than your desired elevation, which you need to remove soil from. You can adjust this slider to move your desired elevation up or down. Please make use of this slider to find the elevation that will result in the least amount of work for you. For example, if this line says units of soil required, that means you'll need to dig extra soil from somewhere else to fill this area up. If it says units of soil left over, that means there will be extra soil which will be placed in your inventory when digging. Try to keep these numbers as small as possible to avoid extra terraforming work. 
By the way, if your inventory is full when you dig up excess soil, the soil will be dropped on the ground, and if you drop or stockpile soil on the ground, it will decay over time and raise the elevation level where it decayed, effectively undoing your hard work. This is not true for stockpiles placed on an active claim, though, so if you want to save lots of dirt for a future terraforming project, use a stockpile on top of your claim after you've built it. When you've decided on your desired elevation level, click on the Make Level button and your character will automatically begin to flatten the land. Objects like bushes and trees will need to be cleared from the area first. You can use the Destroy action to get rid of tree stumps, and Chip Stone to get rid of boulders. Also, if you find yourself getting low on energy from working hard, please find something to eat, like some nuts or berries. A lot of players also use the stone working skill to pave the tile underneath their claim pole once the area is flattened. This is for aesthetics, so pick a stone with a color that you like. Now that you're done preparing the land for your peak claim, make sure you have the Farming and Yeomanry skills, then go into your Adventure menu in the Haven and Hearth section and select Claim Land to place your claim pole. This building will become the center of your future base, but you'll have to wait 8 hours in real time and then interact with the claim pole again before your claim will become active, thus granting you its protections. Until its protections activate, any player will be able to destroy your claim pole with ease. If you're having trouble getting your claim set up because of this, I have a few tips. First, building close to water draws attention to you, so avoid building within render distance. Second, build far away from other players. Players who already have a base may be suspicious of new claims in their area, and are more likely to destroy them if they're close to home. Third, don't be afraid to change locations if you keep having trouble in the same spot. By the way, it's time to use that second beautiful dream that I had you harvest. Go into your adventure menu, access the Haven and Hearth section, and build a new hearth fire for yourself somewhere in the area of your claim. You can teleport back home to your hearthfire quickly by using the Return to Hearthfire action, so please drag it onto your hotbar for easy access. Once your claim is active, congratulate yourself on becoming a landowner and familiarize yourself with some relevant information. When you finish building your claim pole, you'll be given an item called a Bond of Blood and Soil. This item gives you ownership over your claim, so make sure to keep it safe in your study report, where any LP that you earn will also award your claim a resource called Presence. Presence essentially charges up your claim so it can continue to provide you its protections. Presence drains slowly over time, so if you don't log in from time to time to recharge it, your claim will essentially lose power, allowing other players to do whatever they please on your land. You can hover over your bond of blood and soil to check how much presence your claim currently has remaining. Permissions are also important for landowners to understand. By interacting with your claim pole, you can set groups of permissions for color-coded groups of players. Strangers are part of the white group by default, so any permission you give to white players will be given even to players you've never met before. I recommend you avoid doing so unless the area of your claim blocks a river or some such pathway, in which case it's good etiquette to give the trespassing permission to white players. And trust me, you want to be a good neighbor. To assign a color to another player, make sure you've added them to your kin list, either by right-clicking them, make sure you right-click and memorize them first, or by entering their hearth secret in your kith and kin menu. You can also set your own hearth secret from this menu, which you can give to your friends to allow them to easily add you as kin. From your kin list, you can pick a color for each player you've memorized or added as kin. For example, let's say I have two friends who I trust who I'm playing with. I might give them the green color, then enable all permissions for green players at my claim pole so they can move freely, examine containers, take and leave items, and build or destroy objects as they wish. Now, as I said earlier, these permissions can be defied, meaning your P-claim is not a complete strategy for protection. So I encourage you to check out my next video on base building as soon as possible. But at least give yourself a moment to be proud of your accomplishments. And if you have any further questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below.